Okay, so now we are being recorded and I saw um, Naomi already popped something in the chat. You guys can absolutely feel free to use the chat as we go along if that helps. Um, we're not going to be sharing the chat record of uh, this recording. So if that helps you, feel free. Um, so the point of today is to let you know that the ACE framework, which has been around now for um, a month or so as a sort of self-paced set of resources that anybody can use to prepare for teaching and learning during COVID-19. Um, that framework has been adapted into a sort of chronological four-week workshop. Um, Martha and I are going to be offering that workshop July 13th to August 7th on our own campus. And unfortunately, we can't just open that up like a MOOC. Um, because we have to really support our, our faculty who need some pretty significant help. Um, and we're going to be looking at feedback with them and really trying to mentor them through that workshop. But what we are doing is we are making all of the workshop um, available to other institutions. So that if you have one to two facilitators at your institution, like Martha and I, you can actually run the whole thing, even regardless of how much expertise you have in these areas. So what we want to do today is walk you through the workshop so that you can see uh, how we've built it and you can understand what it would take on your institution to adapt it. You could run it just like Martha and I from July 13th to August 7th, which I think is a pretty nice window for those of us who are preparing for fall. Um, but you don't have to, you could run it anytime you want. So you could start it earlier, you could run it later, you could run it in the fall. Um, but if you run it when Martha and I are running it, then you have a, maybe a little bit more access to us in terms of, you know, using a little bit more of the live stuff that we might have or uh, just um, crossing our streams a little bit if we wanted to do some crossover events between our faculty and your faculty. We're probably expecting 40 to 50 people at Plymouth State to participate in, in ACE on our end, but um, we're just doing signups now, so it's, it's hard to know. So um, before we start and Martha sort of shows you what the curriculum looks like, we'll do a screen share and, and walk you through that. Um, I just wanna tell you what the pieces are, the components are that you will want to um, basically take care of so that your faculty have what they need to engage. And Martha's gonna show you what all these look like and we're gonna give you some architecture for most of these. But there's really five pieces to the course. Um, there is the syllabus. And the syllabus, in my opinion, is pretty much 100% provided for you. So everything you need you know, for that syllabus piece, you'll have. Now, it's openly licensed. So if you don't like our syllabus, you can actually just completely change it. But a lot of people right now are thinking, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time and a lot of resources to contribute. So if you don't, you can just use the syllabus exactly as is. Uh, the other things that you will need, um, one thing we are calling a vid space, a video space. So our vid space is right here. It's Zoom. Um, your vid space, just given EdTech, is probably also Zoom, but you may have something else that you use. Um, but I think the course would be maybe a little challenging to run if you don't have some way um, to interact using video um, conferencing with your participants. And that is something you would have to provide on your end. Uh, the other, uh, the third thing that you'll need is a discussion forum. So there's plenty of ways that you can organize a discussion forum. Um, Martha and I are going to use Microsoft Teams, um, but the obvious example at most institutions will be your learning management system. Um, so Canvas, Moodle, uh, DT, whatever that new one is. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time in the learning management systems. Um, but whatever you have, that would be an absolutely great way to manage the discussions that are part of our syllabus. You know, so it'll say, go to your discussion board and post about that. So you'll want to have one of those available. Um, the fourth thing sounds very um, uh, exciting. The course design workbook. It sounds like Martha and I have created a workbook. But really what that is, is a Word document that everybody will need access to their own Word document. Um, but what you'll see is that we refer constantly to put this into your, your workbook. And that's just one running document where they are going to keep their, uh, 
their work that they're doing for themselves in the course. Uh, Martha and I are creating folders inside of Teams so that they can find um, their, their workbook there and always go into their folder and see their workbook. So we're gonna like set them up for people, but you really don't even have to do that. You can just say, make a Word document, that's your, that's your workbook and off you go. So that's where they're gonna do any work for the course that's not in the discussion forums. And then the final thing is the end piece to the course, which is a guided self-assessment. Um, we will be, and again, you can modify it, but we will be providing that for you. Um, the guided self-assessment is basically the final thing that they'll go through to see if they've managed to cover most of the components of the ACE framework as they're thinking about their fall course designs. And the guided self-assessment is based on the checklist that powers our course, um, the, the workshop. And that checklist is a mashup of really four things. One is a great checklist that came out early from Bowdoin College that lots of instructional designers have been using um, when faculty were first going remote and they were like, oh crap, what do I have to do? Hey, here's a checklist to soothe you, right? So there's the, the Bowdoin checklist. Um, there's two Quality Matters checklists. Um, quality Matters um, does sort of online quality control, quality control for online courses. Um, so some of the more instrumental things about best practice in online learning, um, it's stuff that Martha and I don't really tread in very often because uh, it's a, a little bit soul crushing <laughs> when you just take the QM stuff by itself. But when you embed it with other things, it's really helpful stuff, right? Like how to chunk your videos um, so that you're not putting an hour and a half lecture out there for your poor students. Um, accessibility things about captioning stuff or um, setting up your color schemes in certain ways. So we've, we've built in those two, uh, two checklists. One is the remote learning pivot checklist and one is their big online learning checklist. We took a bunch of stuff from those. And the final, of course, is the ACE framework. So the practices that focus around adaptability, connection, and equity are the sort of the core, the heart of the, of the workshop. So we built those into a checklist that becomes part of the final self-assessment. That's its own document. So you'll have access to that and your um, participants can use it to self-assess themselves. That is redundant. Um, and then the way we're running it at Plymouth is we are going to set up um, mentor pods so that people will work in cohorts of about six people and their, their mentor, it will be me or Martha or somebody else we've trained um, who will walk through those checklists with them and you sort of just have conversations about where they are. So if you have instructional designers, academic technologists, teaching and learning people, um, they could all serve as mentors for the course. Of course, if your cohort has like six people, you can just, you don't need pods, right? You just have one group and, and off you go doing the course together. Um, Martha will show you how to access this stuff and where some of it lives, but I just wanted to give you an idea that really you need a vid space, you need a discussion forum, and then there's a couple of circulating documents, but that's about it. Um, we call ourselves facilitators, and then we have these mentors who are checking in with people every week. So you'll probably want kind of like a leader on your campus who's like getting the stuff from me and Martha and like, you know, doing all the communication. And then you may want some support people who can help you just read people's feedback, talk with them, engage with them, because Martha and I are gonna offer some of that to your folks, but not enough, right? The whole point is to build a learning community on your campus. So you're gonna want to have either you or a couple of you, or if you have a big group of faculty, then more of you to work in that support team kind of, um, kind of work. So before I uh, give it over to Martha to show you this stuff and show you the curriculum, does anybody um, have any questions? Remember, you're being recorded. We'll have more private time for questions later, but I'm happy to take any right now. I'm gonna just unmute. That's because it's so clear. Um, that's because you're like, we don't even know what you're talking about until Martha shows us whatever you mean. So I'm going to send it over to Martha. She'll probably do some screen sharing and we will definitely take more questions after we, after we do that. So I'm going to attempt to share here. I have two screens and I sometimes, sometimes this gives me 
some grief, but can everybody see the web page right now for the workshop? Is that yes. cool? great? So, um, so this is the ACE Framework Workshop website. Um, you will see that uh, the URL here, if you want to follow along, is just collab.plymouthcreate.net slash ACE slash workshop. In the chat now, if that helps you. Thank you. Um, and there's a couple things here that will probably change or go away in the next couple of weeks as our course starts at PSU and as our other people get going on. But there is a way here if you have not contacted us yet, although I assume you have if you're here, um, to get in touch with us um, and let us know that you're interested in doing this at another institution. Um, below that, these are uh, most of the resources that Robin just referenced, the workshop resources. And we've just tried to, again, kind of describe what each of those is, what it is we're doing at PSU, and how other schools or institutions could do this, what tools might be. Um, yeah, I don't think, so we're not seeing it scroll down, Martha. We're and just- I was a little worried about that. Hold on. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably people are on the site right now, poking around. Scroll yep, now it's scrolling, Great. yep. All right, so, um, so yeah, that's the little table of workshop resources, which again is just a review of what Robin already went over, but you're welcome to go back to that if you need um, some more reference. And then really the meat of the course is in these four boxes. Um, it's scheduled on a four week um, schedule and each one has a page. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into week one. I've actually already loaded it because I didn't wanna waste our time. Um, and that's not it. <laughs> I lied. Oh my God, you're wasting my time. Well, sometimes the page just takes a lot of load. Um, so, so I'm gonna just walk through a little bit of how week one works because the first three weeks, weeks one, two, and three are really parallel in structure. They, um, they look basically the same, just with different, different content and activities and tasks. Um, so every week has this little box up here called resources and opportunities. We are going to be hosting drop-in hours um, Tuesday through Fridays in our vid space um, that we will make available to any institution that wants to, to invite their participants to join us. We don't see any particular reason why those need to be closed just to PSU. Um, because those are going to be happening in Zoom, we would send you that link for our, our Zoom space um, and you could then distribute it in whatever way makes sense with your participants. Um, something fun, we'll have something in it before we start, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Every week has this thing called Get Out of Town where we're linking to other opportunities that are happening online and remotely um, that may, participants may be interested in looking into. So the first week of this, um, the remote summit um, hosted by um, Arizona State is actually running those first two days. It's a fantastic program. Um, I think it has like 80 sessions. <laughs> I highly encourage you to look at the program if you haven't, and, and it's a great thing to uh, encourage participants. Um, and then this, this is another um, session that's going on through Campus Compact out of Maine that I just added in here. I don't think I even told Robin I did that, but I put that on there too. Um, but every week those offerings will be slightly different based on things that we found that we think might be useful um, to participants. Um, and I'll come back to this Connect With Courses. We'll talk with you guys about that because that's really where you guys might come in. Um, every week at PSU, our um, academic technology coordinator is going to be doing a one hour webinar on a particular technology that relates to some of the work that week. Um, those won't be open to other participants, but we will be sharing, uh, they'll be open to our participants, but not outside of PSU, but we will be sharing those videos. Partly they're not, um, off, we're not offering them to other um, schools because that stuff is so institutionally specific. Um, you may not have Microsoft Teams and Moodle, which is what we use, but if you do and that resource is a useful thing to look at after the fact, you're welcome to um, point your participants to it. And another thing we could do, um, Martha's going to be like, no, it's going to make my page messy. Um, but it, it definitely <laughs> occurs to me, like you guys, many of you, not all of you, um, so shout out to my community college people um, who are just working on a shoestring here. But um, some of you have academic technology, you know, folks of your own. So another thing you can do is you can organize your own tech webinars. You'll see our first one is about Moodle and Teams. It's a very good chance your institution doesn't use either one of those, so it's really useless. So what we could do is under this week in tech, if somebody from, you know, Vanderbilt wants to give 
is running this workshop and you want a, a version for Vanderbilt, we can write this week in tech, Plymouth State, join blah, 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 Vanderbilt, contact blah, 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 blah. So we're happy to even throw some of your stuff in here for the weeks that you are running it, um, or you can just handle it on your own. But one idea is that, you know, you can create your own weekly tech tools, webinars um, that fit with your cohort. Use ours if they happen to align. Um, the second week one probably will when Jason is doing one on creating online lectures. But again, we use Kaltura on campus. And so if you guys don't have the same tool, you'd be better off having your own academic tech person put something together and just slip it into that spot in the syllabus. So yeah, and I'm, I'm totally fine with, it won't mess up the page. We'll make it work <laughs> um, with adding more content there. Um, this next section we have called This Week in Learning Cohorts. As Robin said, our group at PSU is likely to be so large that we're gonna, well, it is gonna be so large. We know that we're having a bunch of cohorts led by some mentors who we've identified. If you similarly have, have that um, structure, you could use this with groups. But if you have a smaller group of um, participants and faculty who are working through the workshop with you, you could just, that could be your learning cohort. And this is just um, a recommendation that the learning cohort meets once one hour a week for a synchronous check-in and to have a discussion and we give some prompts every week um, for that discussion. And then below that, this is the weekly schedule. Every week has one um, and every day has a set of um, kind of tasks for people to complete. So the very first day on Monday, orientation day, invites people to walk, come to the vid space, watch the course orientation. Um, every Monday includes an orientation on Monday mornings. Those are also going to be open, but what we are going to probably ask is participants who are not from PSU to come for the first half hour, which will really be a curricular orientation. And then the second half hour, we'll close it off to just our participants where we can tackle questions that are really specific to um, issues here at PSU and technology that we're using at PSU, both for this class and for teaching in the fall. Um, and just to be clear, um, anything we do like that that's async, if you're in a different time zone or people just can't be free at certain times, everything gets recorded. And the idea is most people, many people, will be engaging with stuff asynchronously. So besides the check-ins with your mentors, we're basically trying to make it so there's really no synchronous requirements um, for the yeah. course, just because we have a lot of um, adjuncts in our in our curriculum, and people are you know have jobs. Um, lots of people are working. So, I think those um, drop-in hours Tuesday through Fridays, we decided we're not going to record those. Those are likely to be a little bit more informal, um, and probably wouldn't make much sense as recordings. But definitely the formal orientations every week and the tech webinars every week would get recorded and shared here once they're after they've been recorded and processed. Um, and so, like I said, every day has some activities. Um, usually the first day is kind of a review and reflect day. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are topic days where we dive into the ACE framework. So on Tuesdays, we t um, dive into this. This is the very first week we're dealing with the value of adaptability. So we look at the course level practices for adaptability. And on Wednesday, we look at the assignment level practices for adaptability and we pull stuff right from the ACE framework um, content. So the readings that, that we assign are coming from those practice pages. The um, choose one assignments or on it for every day that they have one assignment that they're asked to complete. Those come from those practice pages as well. So there's nothing really here that's outside of the scope of the framework. If you're familiar with, if you spent any time on the framework, then it will look familiar to you. Um, you'll see, as Robin mentioned, um, we invite um, participants when they're doing these assignments to share their work in their workbook. Um, that's that Word document that's going to be kind of a just a running workspace for them um, to keep notes, uh, track assignments, um, record anything that's significant in terms of their planning for their fall courses. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, a very similar structure, usually some kind of review, some kind of reading, optional exploration, and then a choose one assignment. Thursdays are our engagement day where we ask people to go out and kind of engage with other stuff that's happening within the workshop. So we, there's some discussion forum op opportunities here, Twitter conversations, 
Um, and then, uh, and I'll probably show this um, once I'm done going through all this, every ACE informed practice page has um, the capability for anybody to submit something to the page, um, an idea, a, a document upload, a link to an interesting resource that's related to that practice. And so one of the engagement options is always for participants to go back and contribute to the practice pages for the week um, with something that they're planning for a course, another resource that they found, a question that they have, so that we can really make those practice spaces um, sort of emergent and vibrant as the workshop unfolds. And then Fridays are what we call our design day, um, where that's when we take a look. Um, we actually look at the checklist on Mondays as well. I forgot to mention that. We have people just um, take a look at that first and then return to it on Friday. Um, and I'll talk about the checklist in a second. And then do some reflection in their work workbooks, some design work for their course, and um, some, some more um, reading of other participants' postings in the discussion forum and have a little bit more conversation around the design of their courses. So every week also has a checklist. Um, and there's a K missing here. It, it's covered in this week's work. It's actually covered in this week's work. Um, so there's seven items every week that are directly linked to whatever we covered in um, the curriculum that week um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then at the bottom, there's three additional items in the checklist, checklist every week that are a little bit beyond the scope of this workshop. So one of the things that we're being really clear to our participants about is that this is a workshop for helping somebody take a, a, an existing course and prepare it for whatever could potentially happen in the fall. It's not a workshop for somebody who's never taught a course before, or who is brand new, has never even thought about teaching this course before. So we're not covering basic fundamentals of course design. There just is no way in four weeks for us to do all of that. There's really no way in four weeks to do what we're even trying to do, but we're gonna do our best. Um, so some of these um, basic things at the bottom of the checklist are sort of re reminders to our faculty, don't forget, you also need to think about these basic issues regarding your teaching um, in order for all of this to come together and work. So that's an example of um, week, that's week one, which really week one, two, and three look exactly like this. Week four is a little bit different. Um, let me show you that. Um, so week four is our tying it together week. And the whole point of week four is to culminate with a project that is their guided self-assessment, um, which is another document. It's a templated document that we give them um, where a, over this week, they're sort of pulling together a bunch of stuff that will eventually make that document what it needs to be for when they meet with their mentor and go through a guided self-assessment together. So on the first day, one of the things that we do is we, had, we conduct a questionnaire at the beginning of the class or the beginning of the workshop um, here in week four, we send them back the answers that they sent us um, and we ask them to reflect a little bit on, on the questionnaire, where they started three weeks before and where they are now. Um, on Tuesday, we ask them to go back and look at some course models that we had introduced in week one um, and also reflect upon um, those course models a little bit. Um, on Wednesday, we really ask them to dig into syllabus design and this is the idea is not like, okay, you have one day build a syllabus, but really all of the work that they've been doing for the last three weeks, they're gonna have a lot of stuff that they can now pull into their existing syllabus, begin to reshape their syllabus. And so this is the day for them to really start to concentrate and devote some time to that. Um, Thursday is the final checklist review. We, in the um, guided self-assessment document, we have the entire checklist in there and we ask them to go in check off anything that they feel they've covered, make any notes that they need to. And if there's anything that they didn't cover for whatever reason, maybe it's not applicable to them, the courses they teach, how they teach, to kind of explain why that's not, um, hasn't been something that they've dealt with. And then Friday is our wrap up day. And it's really the moment where we also in, um, give them direction to meet with their mentor at, at, at PSU. They're gonna have about, I don't know, four or five days during which they have to schedule a 30 minute um, final guided self-assessment with their mentor to go through that whole document that they'll have built in week four um, and talk through their preparation for the fall, identify any gaps that still exist. Those mentors will then um, reach out to us if they feel like 
or have those participants reach out to us if they feel like there are some gaps that still need to be addressed or questions that still need to be answered. So that's um, kind of the weekly schedule. The last thing I wanna show you back on the main workshop page is, so under the schedule, there's a little accordion here that says resources for workshop facilitators. And there's a link here to a Google folder. And in that Google folder, you will find a Google, four, four Google Docs. One is the full workshop curriculum. So it's everything that's laid out on these pages in one Google document, the full workshop checklist. So all um, combined together the questions that we are using for our intake questionnaire. So you can see how we're sort of um, orienting people through that questionnaire and the guided self-assessment template, which is what we're using um, at the end. So you can see what it is people are gonna be building at the very end. Those are um, downloadable from that Google folder. You can view them and download them. So take them, do what you want with them, change them, distribute them, we don't care. Um, so that's all available there. And then the last thing I'm just going to show you, and then we can see if there are any questions, is I want to just jump into one of the practices and show you that submit something um, option, because I do think it has some interesting, so this is the student design and choice practice page on the framework, which we cover in week one. Um, and like I said, every um, Every practice has this submit something um, button that will open up a pop-up. They give us, you give us your name, a title, a description, and then you can upload a file or link to a website. You don't have to do that. You also can just put whatever you want in your description. Um, give us permit, permission to share it under a Creative Commons license. And once you submit this, if you refresh the page, it then becomes, um, let me close this. It then becomes an object here in this revisit section. So that's what we're going to be asking. One of the things we'll be encouraging people to do on engagement days is to go back to these practice pages and help us build them out a little bit through their own submissions. It's also a way that you, for your own institution, if you were working with our curriculum, and let's say the assignments we've chosen don't really resonate with you, you don't think they'd be helpful for your faculty, you actually could come up with an assignment idea, submit it to this practice page, and then in your own workshop, uh, direct people to do that instead. Um, it's a great way not only to you know, modify the framework and the curriculum for yourselves, but also to share it back with the larger community. You might um, come up with an idea that we like better than ours. So, um, so we'd love for people to start interacting with the framework in that way as well. And with that, I'll probably just jump back to the workshop page and op I think we can open it up. Robin, was there anything else you wanted to mention before we do that? No, I just wanted to thank people for joining us because we're going to um, stop the recording. And I wanted to say that I enjoyed eating my hot dog while being recorded. I forgot I was being recorded <laughs> until the end of my hot dog eating. So I hope everybody enjoyed that and the introduction to the ACE framework. Um, so Martha, if you want to stop, stop recording. Hearing? Yeah. Great. And um, can you... Can you stop recording too, I think? Oh, yes. Sorry, I have to do both those things. Um, yes, there it is. <laughs>